The first thing I usually do in the morning after waking up is switch on my bedside light. And every day and every night, lights are switched on and off across the world. It's estimated that electricity for lighting accounts for approximately 15% of global power consumption and 5% of greenhouse gas emissions. So anything that can be done to increase the efficiency of the lighting we use has got to be good news. Well, guess what? Small insects called fireflies could hold the answer to better, more efficient lighting. Welcome again to 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter from the BBC World Service, the podcast about how animals are helping us solve some really challenging problems. We've had a number of fascinating podcasts so far and lots more left in store for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and you'll get every podcast automatically. Please tell everyone about us. And if people you know haven't come across podcasts before, explain it all to them and show them how to find us. I can't believe we're already up to episode number seven, Fireflies and light bulbs. There are a few experiences in life like seeing a shooting star for the first time, a double rainbow, or the aurora borealis, the natural light display often referred to as the northern lights, that are quite simply magical. I remember walking through a field at night on a camping trip, and I noticed that the air was filled with tiny moving lights. It was a firework display unlike any other. The lights, however, were produced not by exploding phosphorus or brightly burning magnesium, but by little insects, fireflies. Despite their name, fireflies aren't flies at all, but beetles. They range in size from five to 25 millimeters, about the size of a small paperclip. And unsurprisingly, most species are active at night. They belong to a family appropriately named Lampyridae, which loosely translates from the Latin as shining ones or shining fire. Glowworms also belong to this family and like their relatives also have a name that's a bit misleading because they too are beetles that luminesce. Whilst most fireflies have wings, glowworms do not, which is how you can tell the two apart. So what of the firefly? Well, they're made up of about 2,000 different species. They live in a variety of warm environments and the best time to look out for them is on warm summer evenings. They love moisture and can often be found in humid regions of Asia and the Americas. In drier locations, you tend to find them around wet or damp habitats. But what do they look like? Sounds like a strange question, but remember, you really only notice them on warm summer nights when they're active and glowing. But in the bright light of day, when they're not luminescing, you'd see that they have flattened dark brown or black bodies with orange or yellow markings. Both the males and females are winged, and depending on the species, either one or both have a light-producing organ. Now, the reason males emit their bursts of light all comes down to sex. The flashing lights they produce might appear random, but they actually follow specific patterns to attract a female of a specific species. It's like a type of Morse code between secret lovers. Each species produces its own unique code. Things like the speed of the males flashing and the amount of time before the females respond to the males are all important. In some species, the fireflies glow in unison, giving the effect of a pair of lights appearing and disappearing at the same time. The light signals are also thought to help in defending them, giving a clear warning of their unappetizing taste. Fireflies produce steroids in their bodies, which make them unpalatable. Their larvae also use their glows as a warning to deter predators, again letting them know they are by no means a tasty snack. If everything goes well, after a female has responded to the flashing patterns of her male counterpart, he'll approach and mate with her. But there's a darker side to this story. Most adult fireflies are short-lived and don't feed during their lifetime. But females of the genus or group called Photaurus are known to eat other beetles, including the males of a rival genus, Photinus. 
when she sees the flashing light of the Photinus male, the Photorus replies with a flash that mimics the slower response time of the female Photinus. As the male Photinus approaches, the female Photorus even reduces the intensity of her flashes to resemble more closely the weaker signals of the female she's copying. No sooner has a male landed than he's seized and devoured by the female. Poor guy. Right, so I know what you're thinking. Just how do these fireflies produce these lights? Well, as I mentioned earlier, fireflies have a special light organ under their abdomen. The light comes about through a chemical reaction that we call bioluminescence. The reaction happens within special cells called photocytes, which are surrounded by air tubes called tracheae. These tracheae supply the cells with oxygen, and this leads to a chemical reaction and the production of light. Unlike a traditional light bulb, however, which produces a lot of heat as well as light, the fireflies is a cold light with almost 100% of the energy given off as light and just a tiny amount as heat, which, as you can imagine, is a necessity for the firefly. If its light-producing organ got as hot as a light bulb, well, it's bye-bye firefly. But now for the light bulb moment. How can we use this knowledge in our human world? Well, the light bulb is a clue. Let me tell you about Jean-Paul Vigneron. Vigneron was a Belgian physicist who took a keen interest in naturally occurring optical structures. It was during a field trip to Central America that he noticed clouds of twinkling fireflies. Intrigued by their display, he brought some of the insects back to the lab to examine them. Now, as I mentioned, fireflies produce light in specialized cells called photocytes just under the abdomen. From here, the light shines through an area of the insect's exoskeleton or outer layer called the cuticle. Light travels through the cuticle more slowly than it travels through air, and some of the light is reflected back into the cuticle, which means the brightness of the glow is reduced. However, the unique surface shape of some fireflies' cuticle helps to minimize these internal reflections so that more light escapes, allowing the firefly to shine brighter. Using scanning electron microscopes, Vigneron and his team found scale-like structures on the firefly's cuticles. They'd noticed that the scales didn't all lie flat. Using computer simulations to explore how these scales affected light transmission, they found that the sharp edges of the jagged misfit scales let out the most light. One of the team likened the structures to a tilted slope like a factory roof. And it was this strange arrangement that was the most effective when it came to improving light extraction. Okay, so why am I telling you all of this? Well, just like Firefly's lanterns, our manufactured light emitting devices like LED light bulbs face the same internal reflection problems. The team wanted to find out if a factory roof shaped coating could make LEDs shine brighter. They created a jagged overlayer on top of a standard LED by depositing a layer of light sensitive material on top of the LEDs and then used a laser to create a triangular factory roof profile. And success! They found that the factory roof coating increased light extraction by more than 50%, which is amazing when you think about it. All that extra light just by adding a few extra shapes. And what's great about this technique is that it doesn't involve creating new LEDs, but instead simply involves some new design enhancements to the current production process. There are other teams also studying fireflies to make LEDs more efficient, so I'm sure we can look forward to some exciting new developments in this area. Thankfully, I don't think there's any chance that my bedroom lights will start flashing to one another like fireflies do at night, but it's amazing to think that nature's lantern could help our own night lights to shine a little bit brighter. Now for a special treat to light up your day even further. Sorry, I know the puns are awful. I just can't help it. Hopefully you've already seen the wonderful animation by Jules Bartle of the Kingfisher and the Bullet Train from our very first episode. 
If you haven't, well, you're in for a treat because Jules has also created a fabulous animation about this episode two of Fireflies and Lightbulbs. To see both animations, head to our website, bbcworldservice.com slash 30 animals and do tell everyone about the animations and of course the podcast. We're heading to the beach in number eight of 30 animals that made us smarter from the BBC World Service to hear how the tenacious grip of mussels inspired a toxic free plywood. Thanks for listening. <laughs>